We're gonna, I'm gonna do some Fort Anders news, but it's nice and good at night in the city of Fresno, cold and chilly. But let's get on to the news. So, here's three possibilities that the Fort Anders can do going into free agency. Despite how people look at the contracts, these are possibilities that the Niners can sign. Number one, Colin Sanders. Colin Sanders is a good run stopper. He's ascending into a good caliber guy you can put in the rotation, but he's a starter. He's shown some flashes for the Chiefs, and he had a sack in the Super Bowl and forced that fumble. So he was a huge factor to that Chiefs defense. He was the guy that made the play. So um, he kind of gives you a little bit of the DJ Jones vibe because he's six foot, 324 pounds. He's good against the run. He's improved a lot better as a pass rusher. He's very spectacular. I don't think his costs will be as much. Like you're thinking, you're, you're looking at the price range of a DJ Jones because he's going to be ascending. He's going to be up and coming. He's going to be a very good player to have on your defense, especially against the run. Especially the way we run our defense. He would be a nice rotation to have and definitely can compete over uh, Javon Killon for that starting spot. So that's a good option to have in free agency. So here's another option. This may sound crazy, but we were discussing about this on the round check, and everybody was thinking if there's a chance we can get Yannick Agakwe. The way it works here is we're going to have to cut in some cap space, restructure more contracts, squeeze in a little more money, maybe get in this front office to get players to convince, hey, if you guys want to win, we might need to squeeze in a little more money just to get these type of players. Yannick Agakwe isn't going to be very expensive like most of the players, you know. A lot of the edge rushers are, are like getting 20 plus million or a little bit more. But Yannick Agakwe's market value is kind of like, it can be affordable. Like he, he's kind of a guy that's not a good run stopper. But when you get him on passing downs, he's disruptive, he's a factor, and he'd be a nice piece on our defense. Like, if you can use them on, on passing downs or something, this defense is going to make some noise, and he should be able to produce well on this defense alone. So he would be a great fit on this defense. It just depends on his price range. And if he's willing to take a team-friendly deal, by all means, he's kind of a realistic possibility we can sign. And then there's another option. Caleb McGarry, a suitable replacement for Mike McGlinchey, his price range shouldn't be as much, but compared to Mike McGlinchey, Mike McGlinchey might have priced himself out of San Francisco despite how he played this season. He played a little bit better than the previous years. But going into free agency, he is listed as the top off at the tackle, which means we ain't going to freaking pay him that kind of money, but it'd be surprising. But if you want to look for a suitable replacement, Kellen McGarry isn't too bad of an option. He's a very capable starter. He kind of seems like a better pass blocker, if I'm being honest. Good runs, good run blocker, and definitely worth the risk in some ways, you know. Those are other guys we could definitely consider. But on the meantime, I'm going to be heading to Danny's and try my gland sandwich. And I'm going to show you guys that video later, guys. Here's the meal. I'll give you my taste review quickly on a, one bite. Fantastic, really good.